Welcome back to Conrad's Corner, KDRT 95.7 FM right here in Davis. I'm Conrad Wilton, and it's time for our story. If you haven't gotten the hint already, it's Taylor Swift. Yes, I'm sure many of you are big fans. I am one myself, although I'm not quite as big of a fan as I used to be, but that's a whole other story. But nevertheless, Taylor Swift, our legal story of the day. What's going on with T-Swift? Well, she is embroiled in a legal dispute with a former radio DJ by the name of David Mueller. Now, you probably have heard something regarding this story if you're in the 18 to 24 age group, just because I'm sure they've been tabloids and Facebook and all that stuff. At some point, you've probably at least read a headline regarding this, but may not know the full tale. And it really is quite sensational. So I look forward to sharing it. David Mueller who is that radio DJ in question, claims that he lost his job after Taylor Swift falsely accused him of grabbing her derriere, shall we say, at the Pepsi Center during a backstage meet and greet in June of 2013. The Pepsi Center is home to the Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Avalanche. Basketball, hockey, come on guys, you guys know that, right? Come on, I don't have to explain that. So, David Mueller, a longtime radio DJ. This guy's been around for 20 plus years of experience, all of that, formerly known as Jackson on the Rhino and Jackson Morning Show on 98.5 KYGO. Mueller's base annual salary was $150,000, which doesn't include performance bonuses, product endorsement, and public appearance fees. According to his complaint, he met and took photos, or he has met and has taken photos with hundreds of celebrities, including Sheryl Crow, Gwen Stefani, and Britney Spears. This is important. Note that this guy, David Mueller, is not a private individual. This is a public figure. He's been in the limelight for 20 years. He makes $150,000 plus a year. He's well-known in the Colorado, Denver community, and he's met all these celebrities. This is important when we talk about defamation in just a few minutes. So keep that in mind. This guy has definitely a reputation worth harming, but also he is a public figure. The incident in question occurred in June of 2013, where Mueller and several other KYGO employees were required to attend a pre-concert meet and greet with Taylor Swift. Now, Mueller took his girlfriend as his plus one and waited behind the hundreds of adoring fans and music personnel in line to snap an autograph photo with Taylor Swift. And then he and his girlfriend finally reached the main attraction. His complaint says that Taylor Swift greeted him and his girlfriend. They exchanged a few moments of small talk, and Swift suddenly exclaimed, Picture time! Turn to the camera! Picture was snapped, and Mueller was caught off, off guard. He had to leap into the photo in the nick of time, otherwise he would have been excluded from the picture or cut off. He said that if he did make any contact with her rear, it was... It was fleeting and incidental. (laughs) Without going any further, that sounds just a little far-fetched, but it gets better. Shortly after the photo, Mueller's co-worker and the KYGO programming director, Eddie Haskell, who knows Taylor Swift, according to Mueller, personally bragged to Mueller that he knew Swift wears bicycle shorts under her stage dress. How does he know this? Because he claims that Haskell told him that he lifted her skirt and found out for himself during his photo op with Taylor Swift, which happened before that of Mueller's. He was with the first round, Mueller was with the second round. So, as the story goes, a member of Swift's security team eventually confronted Mueller as he entered the Pepsi Center to enjoy the concert and accused him of groping Swift. Mueller and his girlfriend were then escorted out, and Mueller was fired from his radio station KYGO two days later. Mueller claims mistaken identity. It wasn't me. It was Haskell, this guy, Eddie Haskell, which actually was his boss at the time, which... Is a little weird that he's throwing his boss under the bus, but nevertheless, he says that Haskell was the one who grabbed Swift, and Mueller says he took polygraph tests, two of them, as a matter of fact, to prove that he had no inappropriate contact with Taylor Swift. Now, just a quick FYI, everyone who's a big fan of lie detectors, well, unfortunately, 
polygraph results are generally inadmissible under the federal rules of evidence. And this case is a case in federal court. So that means nothing. The polygraph results may mean something to you, but according, you know, it means really has no legal significance. Mueller then filed an initial complaint in September of 2015 for intentional interference with contractual obligations. His Rhino and Jackson radio show was signed from January 2013 to January of 2015. And as we already said, this incident happened in June of 2013 and Mueller was fired two days later. So the show was basically canceled and Mueller's contract with that with that show and station, his employment contract was was simply null and void. And Mueller says that's because of Swift and these false allegations, and I'm going to sue her for everything under the sun that I would have gotten under the contract. Taylor Swift countersued in October of 2015 for assault and battery, and Mueller, earlier this week, added slander to his complaint, claiming that Taylor Swift is lying about this groping incident and those lies harmed his reputation. Now, here's the deal. Everybody has heard of slander and libel and defamation. Slander is spoken defamation. Libel is written defamation. So since I guess Taylor Swift was was telling her security guards that Mueller groped her allegedly and he claims that this is a lie since it's the spoken word slander is the way to go everybody knows that slander also deals with lies but what some people don't know is that the lie can't just be any lie it actually has to damage someone's reputation to prevail Mueller has to prove Swift's allegation that he grabbed her was false and harmed his reputation Reputational damage is pretty easy to establish here because he was fired from his job and left with diminished business prospects because everybody sees him as, at best, immature and not worthy of hiring. So that won't be too much of an issue. But whether these allegations are false, whether they're actually lies, that's a matter of for a jury to decide, which is kind of interesting because Taylor Swift was the one who actually requested a jury trial in her battery and assault case, which would make sense because people love Taylor Swift. Her name is internationally known. So the jurors will have heard of her. She might even get a few fans on there. You put two and two together, it certainly stacks the deck in her favor. What people don't know outside of the legal community and then you have maybe a select few folks who aren't lawyers but they work in the entertainment industry or they they simply read a lot of these stories is that if you're going to successfully sue for slander or libel or defamation they're all of the same breed you need something called actual malice which means that even if the allegations are false Did Taylor Swift publicize the allegations with knowledge that they were untrue or in reckless disregard for the truth? Actual malice, this is only relevant if we're dealing with lies, alleged lies, told about a public figure, not a private figure. If you are a private person, your name's not in the media, for example, you're not well-known outside of your community, then all you would have to show is that that guy told lies about me and it harmed my reputation. I lost my job. My family doesn't think the same of me anymore. You get the idea. So if you're a private person, you don't have to worry about actual malice. You're in the clear. But for public figures that want to sue someone, typically a journalist, but in this case it would be Taylor Swift, the the speaker, the person who is allegedly lying, and spreading these alleged false allegations, then this radio DJ, David Mueller, has to prove actual malice because David Mueller, the man in question, himself is a public figure. Remember when I said that reputation was important? It's also important when it comes to the 20 years of radio, meeting Sheryl Crow and all uh, whoever else, Britney Spears, he had on that list and his complaint and the $150,000 a year and the Rhino and Jackson radio show. This guy's in the limelight. He's not as big as Taylor Swift, but he's the public figure that we are concerned with in our legal analysis. So 
that raises the burden for David Mueller. And he has to show that Taylor Swift acted with actual malice. What does that mean? Option one, he can show that Taylor Swift simply lied and intentionally lied. She is intentionally spreading these rumors, knowing that they are false. It's akin to lying to millions of fans and the public at large. I don't buy that for a second, and you shouldn't either. I don't think Taylor Swift is intentionally lying. There's no evidence that she even knows this man before the event. She knew Eddie Haskell, his boss, but I don't. from what I saw, she really didn't know David Mueller whatsoever. So why would she intentionally lie, knowing that these allegations are false? Why would she intentionally lie and tear this guy down? I don't think so. She's got many better things to do. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. But there's another subpart within actual malice, reckless disregard for the truth. Was there any attempt to investigate the incident in question? Was there any attempt to question Haskell? Were there any security guards that supervised the photo that could corroborate what Taylor Swift had to say? Are there any security cameras that would show behind the scenes? And then the big one here is, did Taylor Swift say something to a member of her staff immediately after the shoot? How did she identify Mueller as the quote-unquote groper? How did she do so? And these are important questions because reckless disregard for the truth is a total failure to investigate. It's basically going off of just one source, going off of a hunch and recklessly disregarding the fact that that hunch might be wrong and you don't even do any research, you don't look at cameras, you don't talk to anyone else at the scene, you don't question other suspects, which would be Eddie Haskell in this situation. You just go with your gut, don't care about whether it's true or not, and you spread these rumors and they harm someone's reputation, actual malice, that reckless disregard for the truth, this might be, might be, if these allegations are false, which I doubt, but if these allegations truly are false and Mueller is able to convince a jury of that, he might, maybe, although it's a far-fetched proposition, be able to show that Taylor Swift, more so her staff and her team, recklessly disregarded the truth by simply not investigating and not doing their due diligence. You really need some strong conduct here. It's not intent, but you really need to show just an absolute failure to investigate a shame on you kind of a determination. And that is something that will be very difficult for David Mueller to prove. So do keep that in mind as that lawsuit is decided. My guess is these things usually get settled or maybe just simply dismissed. I mean, if you can't prove the allegations are false, then there really is no more no, no point in going farther. The court can simply say as a matter of law, you can't prove slander because what she said about you was true. We're going to take a break here on Conrad's Corner. When we return, we have the life of a student activist, a couple stories about protesting, but they're a lot of fun, so stick around. My name is Conrad Wilson. This is Conrad's Corner, KDRT 95.7 FM. 